Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to the transaction stripe chart, a key debug feature when doing transaction-based debug using our SimVision solution. Specifically, this is what we'll be covering within this video. I'm now going to switch over to our demo, and this is the same demo environment we've been using on other videos. Now, I'm looking at post-process results of a simulation that I've run previously. However, the transaction stripe chart can be utilized in both interactive or post-process mode. If we've collected transactions within our UVM environment, then what we see is an extra hierarchical element added into our list here in our waveform database, and this is called UVM test top. Now for each element that we're collecting um, transactions on, so let's say in the bus collector here, we see that we have a hierarchical instance and we have a transaction stream name. And I'll explain what those are in a minute. So we see that we have transactions from the bus collector, the driver, the sequencer, and similarly, we have our virtual sequencer and on our UART side as well. Now, I'm gonna take all of these transactions and I'm gonna send these to the transaction stripe chart. I can do that in a couple of ways. I can either say windows and I could say send to and I can say transaction stripe chart, or what I've done is I've enabled the transaction stripe chart button within my send to toolbar here. So I'm just gonna select that. So the transaction stripe chart opens and we're looking at all of the transactions that are collected within our simulation. Now the transaction stripe chart displays transactions starting at time zero in the top. And then as, uh, as we work our way through from top to bottom, notice that the time is increasing. Right now we're looking at transactions from all of these hierarchical locations within our, um, our environment. Now parent-child relationships are shown by indents and those indents are displayed by clicking on the plus sign. So here we see we have a virtual sequence, and this virtual sequence sends things across the UART interface and the APB interface. And I can expand out any, any of those sequences further to see all of the individual uh, low-level requests that are part of that sequence. So this is a lot of information to show in the transaction stripe chart. So maybe I'm only interested in looking at my stimulus, and I want to see what sequences were sent in this simulation. I can easily remove unneeded transactions by selecting or deselecting items within this hierarchy here. So I'm removing all of the drivers and monitors and I'm just showing stimulus coming from my sequencers. So now we see that we have a much smaller amount of information to analyze. Now maybe I might want to uniquely tag these sequences coming from different sequencers. I can do that very easily by right-clicking on the specific uh, hierarchical element, so in this case my APB sequencer, I'm going to assign a color of orange. And we see that the orange color is applied as an outline to each of the transactions. I'm similarly going to do this for my UART, and I'm going to assign that to be blue, and I'm going to set my virtual sequence color to be red. Now we can see where all of these transactions are coming from just at a quick glance. Now, maybe I might want to do some further analysis. So let's say I open up my transaction stream and I want to only look at the fields of interest for me. So maybe, uh, so in order to remove fields that are being uh, displayed currently, I simply right click on the transaction and I'm gonna remove, let's say the stream name. I'm also gonna remove the transmit delay field. Now I'm looking at a more compact view of, uh, of my transactions. Now, maybe there's also a particular scenario that happens at startup, and I'm looking at just focusing in on the transactions that occurred before time 9000. So I can easily do that by filtering and say remove transactions with time after 9000. And I can say apply. Now I'm only looking at the startup transactions that occurred in my simulation that led up to maybe an error scenario. Now I can further refine results by layering on another filter. So maybe I want to look at all of my APB reads uh, and I only want to look at those, um, sorry, my APB writes that are targeting address zero. So for there I could say uh, 
uh, sorry, targeting um, an address that's non-zero. So let's say remove transactions with address and I'll say equals zero. Now I click apply. Now I further refine my results. And let's say within these results I want to search for any transactions that have a particular parity value. So I'm going to say parity value equals one. And now I can say search. Notice that we find one hit here on where parity is equal to one. And I can continue to search through, but I'll only find that one hit. So I've been able to uniquely tag transactions coming from particular sequencers, search as well as remove uninteresting transactions to me. Now, I can also very quickly send all of these sequences out to the waveform window. So let's do that now. So here's my UART sequencer. I can right click, I could say send these transactions out to the waveform window. Now when I do that, a waveform window opens and if I zoom out in time, you'll see that one of these transactions is highlighted. This is the transaction that I currently have selected with my parity value equal one. Now, as I click on any of these sequences, you'll notice that the corresponding transaction in the waveform window is highlighted. Now, another thing that I'd like to show you finally is we've been looking at the stripe chart view. We can also look at a table view of these transactions. And the table view also shows you the parent-child relationships between the transactions. And uh, you can also export all of these results out to a CSV file. That's a comma-separated value file, which then can be read in to tools like Excel for further analysis, if you'd like. So I hope you do find this uh, video useful. Do check out other videos within the series.